Monkey Land is situated in the heart of the Garden Route, 20 minutes east of Plettenberg Bay. It covers 120 hectares of Titsikama Forest, that is the same as 12 soccer stadiums put together. Here we are arriving at the sign just outside Monkey Land. This short drive will build up your excitement as Monkey Land gets bigger and bigger. On entry, experienced tour guides welcome us kindly and explain to us basic sanctuary rules. From there, we are led into the sanctuary to book our guided tour. Some interesting facts. Monkey Land is the world's first and only multi-species free-roaming primate sanctuary. Monkey Land was opened to the public on the 6th of April 1998. There are over 400 primates in Monkey Land. Monkey Land supplies 99% of food the monkeys eat. Monkeys have an IQ of 174. Uh, well, when we started in 1998, um, the original primates were monkeys that were uh, people's pets in South Africa. Some were surplus animals from zoos, and some came from a laboratory, well, various laboratories overseas where they were confiscated and then taken to a safe house called Stifting Up, and Stifting Up sent them to us. Um, Stifting Up is based in Almera in Holland and um, they take in animals that were confiscated from zoos, not specifically only monkeys, but they have, you know, um, raccoons and skunks and so on as well. And, um, but um, the, the reason we started Monkeyland was because there were so many primates in the pet trade and people were selling them in pet shops and all over the place and uh, the zoos even, um, the surplus stock, the surplus animals, you know, when there was a baby born and so on, they would sell those off to uh, the pet trade. So what our whole aim was is to stop the pet trade of exotic animals, basically, specific primates, and then um, we'll curb it as best we could and encourage zoos to rather let us know when there's a when there's surplus and if we could take them, we would. Obviously, we have to pay for them, but when the when the primates came come to us and they have no value. So we, we, we don't sell animals and we put them in a trust so they can't ever be sold. Either. Some interesting facts about black and white ruffed lemurs. They are found in eastern Madagascar. They are one of the largest living lemurs in the world and they mainly eat fruit, leaves and nectar. How much does it cost to us? Oh, that's easy because we had to do an estimate about a year ago, and this uh, well, obviously our, our, our money is thrown together with Birds of Eden, with the same organisation, of uh, twenty-five thousand rand a day, minimum. Pay for it. We are a private um, organisation. The CEO, uh, the gentleman that started the place, his name is Tony Blackburn, and as a youngster, he used to do overland safaris and went to Mombasa and all that on these little tracks in Africa and as a uh, you know, population humans breed a lot so as, as the human civilization grew um, they would um, you know start tarring roads and that kind of thing and that opened paths open to the forested areas and in uh, Africa is a big problem with bushmeat where people eat and they, um, monkeys yeah and they well they eat practically anything that moves yeah. so you know you could call it venison if you want but um, the thing is, primates are close to living relatives. We're actually in the same uh, grouping as them. So, uh, in my opinion, it's a bit cannibalistic, actually. Mm -hmm. And also, it's very sad that we have such little respect for our, our animals that, you know, that it's okay to just eat them and not worry about, you know, future generations. Um, so, he wanted to do something specifically for monkeys. Um, uh, if he was ever in the financial position to do so. So when he found himself in that position when he was older, he's got more kids, you know, he got a couple of his mates together that are equally or similarly conservation orientated. They put money in the stock. The white-handed gibbons are found in Thailand, Laos, Indonesia and China. They eat fruit, leaves and insects. Monkey Land has one gibbon named Atlas. Well, we have tours that go out throughout the day, so um, um, it is good for us, not just from obviously the, 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 the machine that keeps Monkey Land alive, and you know, obviously we charge for tours, 
um, that's how we generate our funds, but that also allows our staff that go into the forest to um, spot any problem. So if there's a monkey limping or one with a, a broken tail or injured foot or whatever the situation might be, they would um, notify the curator, me or you know whoever's um, in a position to immediately assist. And um, like uh, I think it was uh, October, October, November this year as example, um, a female um, kabush, a female derakuli had uh, jumped uh, from one tree to the next and misjudged and uh, actually impaled herself on a tree but she still had her baby with her so mum was dead, baby was with her but of course the baby needs to be fed breast milk and that kind of thing so um, the baby was then taken from the dead mother and then brought to me and then I hand read her but she's already in the process of being released so so, um, so but if the staff were there like that then she would be dead and then um, the same with the uh, ringtail lemur she was found here on the forest floor um, a prim baby and um, I think the mother must have ate either thought it was dead or whatever the situation was I mean I couldn't figure out what the mother was thinking but it was it was it was so close to dying, so um, but we managed to pull her through as well. So yeah, so but I mean, we wouldn't be able to do that if we didn't have feeders going into the forest at uh, sun sunrise, you know. So and we have um, stock at live inside. Monkey Land has the longest suspension bridge in Africa. It is 120 meters long. I'm quite cheeky. Well, uh, just like with any other animal, they obviously breed. I mean, that's uh, they want your, your genes to, to, to um, go out in the world and that kind of thing. That's why your dad had you <laughs> and um, mom, sorry. Yeah. And um, uh, we we obviously don't mind if they breed, um, um, but um, if they don't breed, we have a problem with it. Um, with some species, like specifically the langurs, we only take in boys. Um, because um, they actually live in harems and zoos and zoos then have a problem because they'll have a boy and then eight girls but now what about those other boys? So the word's getting out there now and there, there's a group of um, a Javan langurs that are going to come to us, all boys and then they'll, they will just basically open our doors for, for, for um, langur males. At first we kind of thought we'd like to have um, you know, a proper family group and with the little babies because with the langur families the babies come out sort of bright colours like especially like the spectacle langurs their babies are like a bright orange colour they're really cute so but and tourists would love that but we'll, we'll, we'll help the boys because they're the ones that need the most help I mean otherwise they, they have lives where they live in cages and then um, we do birth control not so much on the females but with the boys because it's a very easy snip and snip operation you know, mm. it's like quick and easy they our vet comes in and, and he slips a couple of males and, and then, um, and then uh, they obviously still try and make babies but nothing happens. So, and, and that we find is the best way. So we'll let you have maybe five years worth of impregnation with females and then, and then no more. Yeah. Um. We've got probably over a hundred of them now. There's um, two big groups in, in the forest. You can see the males here and the females are skinny on this mating season. Yeah. So they gain like 20% of their body body weight, they, their body building, they get bigger mm -hmm. and bigger to attract the females. Yeah. 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 Syndrome, and really what it is, is uh, we have to A, introduce the primates to other primates because many of the primates um, have not met other monkeys in their lives or lemurs or whatever the primate might be because you could have been a pet monkey and I mean the chances of your, your owner having you know, many pet monkeys is just about zero and um, the, the diet's generally wrong by the time they get to us and the, the um, hand and eye coordination is generally totally wrong because um, if you have a monkey in a cage in your backyard you generally have a stick and another stick or a pole and a whatever and it's stat static stuff you know it doesn't swing in the wind and so you can't just release a monkey in a tree like this because you know if you jump jump on a branch it might snap so um, hand and eye coordination a b diet because 
sometimes people have said their monkey sweets or whatever, you know, bad food. So you've got to get the, the eating habit right and make sure that they eat enough, deworm them, that kind of stuff, and then also socialize them because um, that's very important because never mind just meeting a species, the moment you're outside your monkey land, there are all kinds of plants from all over the world. So, you know, to, but, but we kind of been doing it for a while, so, so we kind of know when they when they arrive. And of course, if, if they battle a little bit in the outside, we just, we just take it a step back and try again. This documentary was created with many thanks to Lara Mostert and her staff at Monkeyland for their assistance. I dedicate it to the great work they are doing at Monkeyland.